All right, so my boss wanted me to make a YouTube video today. While I am not prepared at all, I did come up with an idea this morning. I thought it would be pretty relevant if we played with a coronavirus API. So I found one that works pretty good, and today we're going to use it to make an animated graph in AR. So let's get started. Okay, first things first, go to github.com slash third dash Aurora, and go to this AR Foundation example, and we're going to download this. This is going to be our starter project. So open this up in Unity, and what we have right now is a, a project we did in a previous video, but basically it'll just allow us to place something on the ground. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make this graph, and we're going to place it on the ground with AR Foundation. So let's click into our main scene here, go to File, Build Settings, and uh, let's switch our platform to Android or iOS, whatever you prefer. Okay, and then now would be a good time if you want, go into your player settings and um, configure all this stuff. Um, just make sure you have a good bundle identifier. I'm gonna go com dot dot um, ar graph test. Okay, cool. So we got all that stuff now. Let's let's build our graph first of all. So if we go to the scene view, we have this cube in here that we're currently placing. But let's make a little graph. So under content parent, um, create an empty game object. Make sure actually that it's zeroed out. So set all the scales to one, position to zero, and we're just gonna call this graph. Well, we'll call it graph parent. Okay, cool. Now, let's see, right click here. Let's create another empty game object and we're gonna call this um, tested. So, oh, before I forget, let me just go over the API. Actually, we should probably just do that first. So actually, go to coronavirusapi.com, and this was just an easy one to work with, and it didn't require you to like create an account or anything, so we're gonna roll with this one for now. This gives you uh, the number tested, uh, the number positive, and the number of deaths um, for the entire US, and it gives you by state. So what we are going to deal with is there's a CSV, file here, time series in CSV format. This is what we're gonna deal with. So let's actually copy this link address. And well, first of all, let's see what it's gonna print out. So back in Unity, let's go to our scripts folder and just create a new c -sharp script and let's call it API. Open that up in uh, Visual Studio. And let's make a call, get this CSV file and at least just print out um, its contents as of right now. Okay. so. First of all, we want, um, let's make a string at the top, const string endpoint, and we're going to paste in that endpoint. Now let's make a function, um, public void um, get uh, time data, let's call it. And then this is going to start a coroutine that's going to be called get time data routine. Because you always have to, when you're making a web request, you have to do it inside a code routine. So now we can go down here and we can make our enumerator and then we'll paste in this name. Okay, cool, but we need to yield. So let's do, um, well, first of all, what's it called? Unity web request. Uh, let's call it request equals Unity web request dot get, and then we can paste in our endpoint there. Cool, and then we can yield return request dot oh, send web request. Yes, cool. And then here we just want to check if there's an error or not. So we can do if um, request dot no is network error. I think it's called. Yeah, is network error. Um, We'll just debug log uh, network error, or else we want to parse the data, and that is going to be request dot download handler dot text. Yeah, cool. So now let's make a function called parse data, and that's going to take in a string, which is our data, and then here let's just make sure this is working. So debug log data, cool. Let's run this and see what happens. 
Oh yeah, nothing's happening because we didn't call the function yet. So let's just make a test case here, start, and we'll just call get time data. Okay, now we need to put this on somewhere. So on our graph parent, let's just add our API script. And now let's press play and test this and see if it prints anything. Cool, okay, so it made our request. And you can see that this is what it's giving us. So date, uh, time, seconds, tested, positive, and deaths. Okay, and this is from the time, it looks like March 8th through today, the 23rd, I believe, yes. That is current through today. Okay, so now we know, let's come back to this script, but for right now, we are just going to do tested, positive, and deaths, and that's what we're going to animate in our graph. So uh, the first bar is gonna be called tested, so let's create a 3D object cube underneath that. Let's make this smaller. Um, sure, that looks pretty good. I guess, and let's move our whole graph over actually. Okay, that looks good there. So, okay, now this cube, we made it a child of this tested object, and what we're gonna do is we're going to move this down um, 0.1, negative, oh sorry, move it up 0.1 so that it's at the top of this uh, game object, so now when we scale it, you can see that it'll scale uh, only in one direction versus if we didn't have it as a child, it would only it would scale in both directions. So this is what we want, but we want this to be sideways. So let's rotate it 90 degrees. And then yeah, when we scale it on the Y, it should go in the right direction. Beautiful. Now we're gonna need three of these, so let's duplicate. Beautiful. Okay, cool. So we got three bars and they should all go in the right direction. Yes, they do. Very nice. Now we need some titles for our graph here. So let's go create 3D object text mesh pro, import TMP essentials. Okay, let's scale this and just get this rotated and looking okay. Cool. That looks good. So this is gonna be called, let's call this text um, name. That looks good, and we'll just center all of this. Oh no, you know what, let's left align it actually, and then center there. And we'll call this um, US uh, corona, corona virus. Cool. Uh, let's change the height. Let's change the width so it's all in one line, cool. Let's make this 40 by five. Yeah, that looks good there. Awesome, now let's duplicate this and we're gonna have a text title. And this is where we're gonna put the date. So let's move this down and then let's put a fake date in there. Uh, March 4, 2020. Okay, um, that looks pretty good. Let's see what happens. Okay, I don't want it to wrap, cool. All right, that looks good right there. Should be decent. And let's move both of those down a little bit, actually. Cool, I'm not gonna take too much time to make this pretty. You guys can do whatever you want. Add shadows, change the font, any of that stuff. We're, we've got a lot of programming to do, so we'll probably stick with that. Uh, so we got those titles, and then duplicate this one more time, and let's bring this over here. And then let's name these. So I think we started with yeah, let's put these in order. So we're gonna have deaths, positive, and tested. So txt deaths, change this to deaths, and let's actually anchor this over here, and then move it over. Beautiful, duplicate that, and then we'll do the same thing for tested. And po uh, we'll do positive first. Positive, change this to positive. Bring this down. Uh, we should make this smaller, actually. Let's just do it again first. Let's get our tested in there. TXT tested. Tested, cool, bring that down there. And then let's highlight all these and 0.07.
Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, you get the idea. You could center this, do whatever you want, but uh, let's leave it there for now. We do. We should make these different colors. So let's go uh, assets folder, create a folder. Let's call it materials, and then click in here and then create a new material. And let's just go red. Um, let's duplicate that. We'll make one for blue and make one for green. And then, so red, we'll put, oh, you know what? Expand these. We're gonna put the materials on the cube. So deaths is gonna be red. Um, let's see, positive cases, we'll make that blue. And then tested, we'll make that green. And then let's just change these colors a little bit here. Beautiful. Okay, cool. We got some colors. Um, I think that scale looks all right. We may want to change this later, but uh, for now, let's leave it here and let's just delete this other random cube. All right, so our graph is looking good. Let's get this stuff parsed into meaningful data here. So let's copy this line here. This will show the format that our data is going to take. So down here in our API script, let's just, um, or actually, you know what, in parse data, let's just make a comment and we'll paste that stuff in there so we know how everything is going to come in. Now, we're gonna need to put this into some type of data object. So um, go back to the project view here and in scripts, let's make a new C sharp script and let's call this, um, I don't know, time data. And this is just gonna be an object that we store each line of info into. Okay, so we're just gonna go public class time data and then this is going to have um, a public date time, we'll just call this date. We're gonna have a public int and that's gonna be the number tested, a public int and it's going to be the positive cases and public int deaths. Okay, cool. So let's format this appropriately. Yeah, that looks good. All right, cool. Now back in API, the first thing we need to do is if you look in the console, you can see this info that's coming out. Um, first of all, we need to split the stuff by a line. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make a list of strings. We're gonna call this lines and we're going to split the data by the new line character. And then we're gonna go to list. And then I think we need link. Yeah, system.link should get us there. Yes, cool. And then now, so we have everything, we have each line in a list of strings, but you'll notice that in this data, we don't want the first line and then there is an empty line at the end. So since we're using a list, we can just do list.remove at, uh, we can do zero for the first line, and then we will remove at lines, oops, oops, lines.count uh, minus one. And that'll give us the last line, cool. So now, uh, so we got good lines there, let's just, um, make sure we're doing this correctly. So for each string line in lines, let's print line and let's see what that looks like. Okay, beautiful. So we got each of our lines. Now, what we're gonna wanna return is actually, we're gonna wanna return a list of our object that we made earlier. So a list of time data. Uh, let's call this, I don't know, what should we call this? Um, data list equals new list of time data. Oops, capital there, cool. And so let's actually make this function return a list of time data and let's return data list. Okay, but so there is nothing in data list at the moment, so we need to populate it with data from each line. So inside this for each loop, we're going to uh, create our data objects. But first of all, you'll notice each line, uh, they did nicely comma separate this stuff, so now we're gonna split 
this data by commas. So let's make another list. Actually, we're going to do almost the same thing we did up here, but we're going to split it by the comma. And then let's call this line data. Cool. And then we are splitting uh, each line. So now here we can load our new uh, time data object. And then the first thing we want is the date. So we can do date equals, I think date time dot parse. We should be able to just parse this. So, and that's going to be line data index zero. And then we need, oh, sorry, semicolon down there. So data, no, sorry, date, and then we want tested, and then we want our positive cases, and then we want our deaths, and I believe that is it, but these we're going to change to int.parse 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So we're going to start at three and then this will be four and five. Cool. And then down here we should be able to, we have our data list uh, dot add time data. Okay. Now we need to get this data in, in a meaningful way, but we're going to be doing that from our graph. So, oops, I should not be playing right now. So go back to the project into scripts and let's make a new script called um, graph controller. This is where we're going to call our API from. So let's just remove all this stuff for now and get this formatted properly. And we know we're going to want a reference to our API. So let's go serialize field because we don't want this uh, exposed as a public, uh, public object, but we just want a reference to it in this script. And we'll just call it API. And then on start, we will call to our API. So we'll do API dot get what's it what did we call it again? Get time data. API dot get time data. Now we need it to return this list. So actually what we probably want to do is comment this out for now. And back in API, we're going to get rid of this start call. And then get time data is going to take a unity action. And it's going to be a list of time data. Yeah, a list of time data. And we're going to call this callback. Because what we're going to want to do is we want to call this uh, get time data function. And then we want to be able to pass a function that receives the data once it's um, you know collected and parsed and everything like that. So we're pro we're going to paste this down here. We're going to also call that callback, and then we're going to need to pass the callback in there. And then we should be able to do this here. Cool. Yeah. So now our callback is going to return. Uh, it's going to call parse data, which returns a list of time data. So then in our graph controller, we need to make a function void on data received. And that is going to receive a list of time data. We'll just call it data list. Cool. And then we should be able to call get time data here and pass in this function. Why is that not working? Oh, duh. Okay, cool. So now we're getting our data back in our graph controller script. Okay, so the idea here is on data received, we're gonna to wanna to start a coroutine that like loops through every given time frame and changes the bar graphs accordingly. So here we're gonna just want to start a coroutine. Uh, let's call it cycle data routine and Let's see, down here we're going to want to do create a coroutine and we're going to call it cycle data routine. And then let's just do um, yield return new wait for end of frame for now. Just to get these errors to go away so we can compile. 
and this is going to take the same thing, a list of uh, this time data. So we're going to want to pass that in here. And then first thing we're going to want to do is loop through this data list. So for each time data, data in data list. So the first thing that we're going to, we're going to want to change is the graph title. So up here, let's make another serialized field. And this time it's going to be text mesh pro. And we're going to call this title. And then let's go back into the editor here and uh, our graph parent, this is where we're going to put our graph controller. And it's looking for an API script. Let's drag that in and it's looking for the title of the graph. So let's go text title there. So the first thing that we're going to want to set is title dot text. And we're going to set this equal to data dot title or sorry, data dot date dot to string. And we want this to be formatted in a pretty way. So uh, four M's, the date, a comma, and then the year. And I only know this because I looked it up before I did this tutorial. So let's make sure this works first. But um, let's go public float uh, wait time. So we can configure this in the editor. And then here we will yield return new wait for seconds. And we'll pass in our wait time. Oh, so this, we're going to want this to repeat continuously. So let's go while true, and we'll just put all of this in a while true. That way this should just continue all the time. And wait time, point one. Cool, let's hit play and see if this works. All right, beautiful. So our date is changing. Now we just need to get our bar graphs to animate. Okay, so that seems to be working. Let's delete this yield return wait for end frame. We don't need that anymore. Now we want to animate the bars, but we don't simply want to just change the scale. We want the scale to animate. So let's go back into the project view and we're gonna make a new script and we're gonna call this uh, bar behavior. Okay, so this script is going to go on each one of our bar graphs that we're gonna change the scale of. So highlight all those, add component, bar behavior. Okay, now click this, open that up in the editor, and we're just going to basically make a script here that'll allow us to uh, lerp, interpolate the scale of each bar. Okay, so the first thing we need is a configurable um, speed. So const float speed, and then usually like six or seven works well for this, so let's just put it at six for now. And then we're gonna need a vector three desired scale. So inside the start function, um, desired scale equals transform dot local scale. And then inside the update function, transform dot local scale equals vector three dot lerp. And that's gonna be the local scale is what we're gonna pass in. And then we're, go we're moving to the desired scale by time dot delta time times our speed. And then the last thing we need in here is a public void. Um, let's call this uh, set scale. And it's going to take a float y. And then we're just gonna do desired scale dot y equals y. And then this is what we're going to call from our graph controller script. So we got that, that looks pretty good delete these comments because that's going to bother me. And then inside our graph controller, we need a way to reference those. So let's go, let's do another serialized field. Uh, this time it's going to be a list of bar behaviors. Um, bars equals new list, bar behavior. And we're going to access these by indices. So order is going to matter. So let's load those now, and we just need to remember the order. So let's see here. Um, let's do the same order that was in our object. So tested positives deaths. Okay, so back here, graph parent bars, we're gonna change the size to three, and we're gonna go tested 
positive and deaths. Cool. That is looking pretty good. So now back in graph controller, then we can do something like this. We can do bars zero dot set scale. And then we're gonna go um, data dot tested because that's the first one. And then actually we're gonna wanna divide this by some type of scale because we don't wanna just set it directly because like I think the number of tested goes into like the 20,000 range. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's make another configurable float up here and we're gonna call it bar scale. And that's what we're gonna divide by. So then we can just go, do, go through this and then do the same thing for the other ones. So bar one and bar two, and this is gonna be positives, this is going to be deaths. And I think that should be pretty good. So let's test this and let's see what happens. Uh, we never set our scale. Let's actually set these to default values because we don't want this going out of control here. And then let's go 5,000. I did this before. I think I used 5,000. I think that was a good scale, but let's just be sure here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now you can see our bars are animating. That went a little bit far. Maybe we change this to 7,000. And then the speed, I think it's a little bit slow. Maybe we can go 0.05 for our wait time. Oh, did I do 70,000? Yeah, I don't want that. Let's go 6,000. That looks pretty decent. Yeah, I don't mind that. Oh, you know what is happening? It's kind of weird. When the graph restarts, it goes back to zero. So let's, okay, make sure to change. Oh, you know what, let's just, yeah, just change these here. Make sure to change up to 0.05 and 6,000. That looks pretty good. But we want our graph to not alert back to zero, but we want it to reset. So let's go, yeah, okay, bar behavior, public void reset, oops. So in here, what we're gonna wanna do is desired scale dot y equals zero. We'll set this back to zero and then we need to explicitly set the transform local scale to desired scale. That should reset everything like we want. And then back in graph controller. Uh, so here, so while true, so for each time data. Okay, so then right here, we're gonna wanna loop through um, every bar behavior, bar and bars, and then we can just call bar.reset, and then that should reset our stuff back to zero without it interpolating. Let's test this to make sure this is good. Okay, so we're moving along, boom, and then we reset to zero. Yeah, I think that's better. You don't have to have that, but whatever. All right, let's test this and see what it looks like on the device. All right, so everything is working. It's not great, but you get the idea. You probably wanna go back into Unity and change the scale, make everything smaller so it fits better in the frame, and then um, change that, um, that divisor to something higher, because this green bar is just going, it's going too far. So, but yeah, you get the idea. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for today. Let me know in the comments what you guys wanna see in the next video. And with that, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.